excellencies president my colleague committee members sumit sharma ladies and gentlemen a warm welcome to all of you it is my profound privilege and honor to introduce and welcome her excellency madam nenaba jagni the high commissioner of the gambia in india i also recognize the presence of mr ram mohan our honorary council in gambia and a very reputed businessman from gambia along with mr lamin manga the honorary council general of russia to the gambia and a prominent businessman they are about to join us and i welcome them also on behalf of the indo african chamber of commerce to this webinar today the gambia is a small west african country bounded by senegal with a narrow atlantic coastline it's also known for its diverse ecosystem around the central gambia river abundant wildlife in its kiang west national park and baobolo wet island reserve the capital banjul and nearby serekonda offers access to beaches tourism is an important source of foreign exchange most visitors are drawn to the resort that occupy a stretch to the atlantic coast the bilateral relation between india and the gambia are warm and friendly president his excellency adama baro appreciating the initiative taken as a part of ongoing celebration of the 150th birth anniversary of mahatma gandhi wrote an anthology on what gandhi means to me gambia's resident high commission in new delhi was inaugurated in february 2009 The Embassy of India in Dakar, Senegal, is concurrently accredited to the Gambia. His Excellency G. V. Srinivasan is our current High Commissioner of the Gambia. India has also appointed an Honorary Council in Gambia. The gentleman I was mentioning, Mr. Ramon, who is going to join us today. Honorable Sri Ram Nath Kovind paid a state visit to the Gambia from 31st July to 1st August 2019, which was the first ever high power visit. During his visit, the Honorable President reiterated India's commitment to support Gambia's development. In particular, India has agreed to relocate our line of credit, which is given to the tune of $92 million, for infrastructural projects, as well as, as well as extended ground assistance to support capacity building for revival of cottage industry. and solar energy project to install about uh, 300 uh, solar home system and 20 solar water pump in selective villages in the gambia the economic and commercial relation between the two are very cordial india's duty free tariff preference scheme is applicable for import of commodities from the gambia and as per director general central statistic data india's exports total export between the two nation is 202 million dollar like the exports are concerned it is um, 157 million and imports are concerned it is 45 million so totally it is 202 million dollar as a bilateral trade basket the major item exported by india to the gambia includes cotton yarn fabric made up plastic cosmetic toiletries drugs and pharmaceutical semi finished iron and steel product whereas gambia's main item of exports to india is raw cashew ferrous and non ferrous metal scrap the indian council of cultural relation allot about 30 scholarship to the gambian national every year the presence of indian community is uh, about 1000 people there they are mostly engaged in trading and private business including the construction sector a chamber has been actively involved with the gambia since 2009 in every occasion and event we have the presence of the gambian high commissioner from delhi we have hosted many business delegation from gambia there was a sizable presence of the delegation from the gambia now about the eminent speaker let me take the opportunity to introduce you a very dear friend a well wisher of my chamber a very dynamic personality and a younger sister her excellency ms jainaba jagni the high commissioner of gambia in india welcome excellency she is born in gambia and was educated in liberia togo and the united kingdom madam jainaba has done 
MA in Research Method Education from the University of Durham and a Certificate of Global Diplomacy from the prestigious School of Oriental and African Studies, University of London. Whilst living in the UK, she was a lecturer of Middlesex University and a usability executive at Red Eye International in London. She has published several papers in the field of cross-culture interface design, and one of which has won the Outstanding Paper Award at the IDS International Conference. In March 2017, Her Excellency was appointed as Gambian Ambassador to the Republic of India, and I had the privilege to invite her to Mumbai for our first annual mega event, I for Africa, attended by her. And thereafter, she was kind enough to visit with us to Gujarat on many occasions since then. Prior to her appointment, she served as one of the youngest and first ever female director at the Ministry of Higher Education, Research, Science and Technology in the Gambia. She was given the Herculean task to set up Directorate of Research which she operationalized efficiently and effectively, putting research on the education map of the Gambia. This is indeed a very tough job. Ms. Jagne also succeeded in the development of several memorandum of understanding for the ministry with ministry department and agencies both within and outside the country. So it is my absolute honor to invite Her Excellency Madam Geneva Jagni, the High Commissioner, to address this August gathering. Madam, the floor is all yours. Thank you. Thank you. So um, good afternoon and good morning and good evening to all the attendees in the different time zones around the world. It gives me immense pleasure to participate in this webinar organized by the Indo-Africa Chamber of Commerce and Industry. I applaud Secretary General Mr. Nanda Rajendran for this laudable initiative in organizing a webinar series on doing business in Africa. I also use this opportunity to acknowledge my colleagues at the High Commission and my special guests from the Gambia, the Honorary Consul of Russia and the Honorary Consul of India, as well as the President of the Gambia India Business Council, all of whom are prominent businessmen in the Gambia. I shall invite them to say a few words later on um, about doing business in the Gambia from their perspective. But now, um, Ms. Moderator, if you'll allow me, I'll share my screen and commence my presentation. Yeah. So the presentation will be given in the following format. First, the introduction, where I will give you general background information about the Gambia. Then we shall look at briefly at the country profile. I shall then get into why you should invest in the Gambia, characteristics of the Gambian business environment, priority sectors for investments, requirements for business registration, and guarantees the government gives to potential investors. Finally, I shall briefly introduce you to two of the main institutions you can obtain further details from, namely GAIPA and GCCI. So the Gambia is one of the smallest and most peaceful countries in the world, also known as the smiling coast of Africa. It is bound by Senegal to the north, south, and east, and the Atlantic Ocean to the west. The River Gambia, from which the country derived its name, runs through its entire length and almost equally divides the country's land area of about 12,000 square kilometers. The country is divided into seven administrative regions, with Banjul as the capital, and the official language is English. After over two centuries of colonial rule under the British, the Gambia has become an independent nation on 18th of February 1965 and became a sovereign republic on the 24th of April 1970. It is a member of the United Nations, the African Union, the British Commonwealth, as well as a wide range of regional and world organizations. The country's third and current president, His Excellency Mr. Adam Barrow, was democratically elected and sworn into office in January 2017. Maintenance of multi-party democracy, adherence to rule of law, the preservation of fundamental human rights are integral parts of the country's political framework. Despite being predominantly Muslim with more than 90% practicing the basic tenets of Islam and less than 5% being Christians of various denominations, the Gambia is traditionally very tolerant of all creeds and beliefs. The currency 
in used in uh, the Gambia is the Thalassi, which even though it fluctuates against major world currencies, is still stronger than most of the other currencies in the sub-region. The latest census estimated the population of the Gambia at 2.2 million people, including a fairly large community from neighboring West African countries and of the Lebanese descent. Over the last decade, India has become an integral part of the country's economy, and the number of Indian nationals living in the Gambia is approximately 1,000, and most of them are engaged in commercial activities and businesses. And as Sunandra said earlier, you'll be hearing from one of them, the Honorary Consul, um, Ram Mohan. There are eight ethnic groups, the Mandinka, the Wolof, Fula, Jola, Serahule, Sire, Manjago, and Abu. The climate is mostly subtropical with a long dry season from November to May and a short rainy season from June and October, although in recent times this pattern is changing due to global warming. Temperatures range from 21 to 27 degrees during the dry season known as Hamatan and between 27 degrees to 32 degrees Celsius during the rainy season. Now, why would you invest in the Gambia? The Gambia is a peaceful country, one of the safest countries in Africa and indeed around the world. As I had previously mentioned, the Gambia was colonized by the British and thus English is the official language, making it easier for communication purposes for business operations between our countries. We've also tried to maintain a highly stable economy so investors may profit from a liberal market-based economy, which is characterized by sustained fiscal and monetary discipline, flexible exchange rates, and reliable laws. The Gambia is a friendly people, which is commented on by almost all visitors and expatriates there. And the expatriates also enjoy the relatively low cost of living, which is currently about 40, 40 or so percent less expensive than in India. The country offers competitive labor costs, so there's an availability of cheap labor force, helping low operational costs, and there's also an abundance of semi-skilled and unskilled labor force with average wages between two to three dollars a day, which is substantially lower than many West African countries. The political will and the political support is there for development and the government has instituted policies and initiatives geared towards creating conducive environments for profitable investments. There is an abundant and largely unexplored investment opportunities across all sectors with fiscal incentives, including tax holidays from five to eight years, or five to 10 years rather. Despite, all, despite giving all the above points, a lot of people will still be skeptical about our population size, which a lot of people laugh about, especially in India, which is probably equivalent to a housing estate or an enclave in New Delhi. So now let's move on to why it is a good idea to invest in the Gambia, bearing this in mind. Being a member of the economic community of West African states ensures easy market access to over 300 million people. And the Gambia also benefits from unrivaled access to large and growing market, not only in ECOWAS, but also Great Britain, the European Union, and the United States of America, given our well-developed transportation options. By now, some of you are probably getting tired of hearing my voice. So what I will do is I'll give you a short break before I continue my presentation, and I'll play a video about investing in the Gambia. Welcome to the Gambia, the smiling coast of Africa. It is known to be the smallest country on mainland Africa, with a population of less than 2 million people. But this small sliver of land has so much to offer and so many experiences to share. The Gambia is now a free Gambia. It's a Gambia that respects freedom of expression. It's a Gambia that, is rest that has restored the principles of democracy. And to say that investors 
or anybody who is interested in engaging and supporting this process and come to uh, contribute to the Gambia is welcome. We are an open liberal economy. With an economy that is largely dependent on tourism and agriculture, coupled with an increasingly youthful population, the Gambia still has untapped potential for value addition, job creation, and sustainable employment opportunities. Agriculture has contributed significantly to livelihood development, serving as a backbone for the Gambian economy, as well as a source of daily income for thousands of farmers. We have benefited a lot from Gambia's location and investment incentives um, to allow us to employ many Gambians in this field. The River Gambia runs right across the length of the country, providing a reliable water source. The River Gambia is also home to different fish species, contributing to the country's food basket and providing gainful employment for people across the country. The waters also provide for international markets, bringing much needed foreign exchange into the country. The river opens its mouth right into the Atlantic Ocean, which stretches its magnificent beaches along the west coast of the country. This beautiful strip, where sun, sand and sea meet, is home to the country's many hotels and an abundant supply of sunshine and sincere smiles. It is the birth of a new political dispensation, following the democratic election of the current government in December 2016. With this new turn, hopes and aspirations abound for a new Gambia that caters to all and is able to meet its full potential. Known as one of the most stable and peaceful countries in the world, the Gambia offers new opportunities for investment. We are ready to work with anybody who will come and respect the rule of law and are ready to also recognize the principles of democracy and that they are safe and the Gambians are welcoming them to the Gambia. The new government of the Gambia recognizes the critical role of trade for socio-economic development, investments in the abundant natural and human resources, and trade in goods and services will contribute to creating jobs and wealth for all Gambians. It is crucial that we support to improve the capacity and competitiveness of the economy to produce goods and services for enhanced growth, employment and poverty reduction. While the Gambia is small, our ECOWAS membership gives us access to over 300 million people within the region. Additionally, the Gambia is also used as a trade hub thanks to our good road network, infrastructure and efficient port facility. The government has rolled out a series of initiatives and investment opportunities to boost commerce, diversify exports and facilitate the exchanges of goods and services. A key objective of these initiatives is to create gainful employment for Gambia's large youthful population. With the political will, polyvalent markets and sound returns, it is surely a new dawn for the country and, like the sun sets at the end of each beautiful day on the smiling coast, your corporation investment shall be rewarded. The Gami is open for business. We welcome you to the smiling coast, your home away from home. Join the partnership. Gambia has decided. What about you? So, I had mentioned earlier that the Gambian people are very open and friendly, and this is an added advantage for investors because they have easy access to decision makers, and the country has an open door policy whereby engaging relevant ministries and their ministers, departments, and agencies, and all people is relatively easy and free of bureaucratic delays. The Gambia is the second most price competitive country in the world for travel and tourism. And we have business friendly reforms which have reaped significant improvements in cross border trading. Easy to start a business and access other West African economies. 
In addition to this, starting a business is significantly less complicated when compared to other sub-Saharan sub countries. This is a healthy public, there is, sorry, a healthy public-private sector partnership with a very positive relationship between the government and the private sector. The private sector recognized as the engine of growth and the Gambia Chamber of Commerce and Industry represents the voice of the private sector. The Gambia Investment and Export Promotion Agency is a one-stop shop mandated by the government to support investors with their investment and export development. They can provide in-depth information about attractive incentive packages to investors, characterized under special investment certificate or free zones license, and further brief you about the, the developments in the legal system to improve business confidence. The government has made considerable efforts to modernize the law, judiciary, and the administration of justice generally. The government is also rapidly increasing infrastructural development and a strategically improved road system, which includes the recently opened Senegambia Bridge, the expansion of the capacity of the seaport and warehouse complex, and the fully computerized system in the port of Banjo to simplify cargo documentation procedures in addition to other measures. The government through the Gambia Investment and Export Promotion Agency Act of 2010, and in line with the National Development Plan of 2018 to 2021, has highlighted the following sectors as priority for investment, agriculture, fisheries, tourism, manufacturing, energy, petroleum, trade, mining, ICT, financial services, ANC transport, healthcare, and education. During my presentation, I shall touch on some of these, um, but in-depth information can be obtained from Guyper and GCCI. Now, at the, at the beginning, most of you saw my face while the video was on, so most of you saw my chubby cheeks and you know that I love food. So I'll commence with the agricultural sector and implore most of you to invest in this sector. The agricultural sector contributes about 30% of the gross domestic product, accounting for about 60% of the country's foreign exchange earnings, and employs about 70% of the active, non-formally educated labor force, which consists mainly of women and youth. The goal for agriculture under the National Development Plan is to transform the sector into a sustainable, modernized, diversifies production and export-oriented sector, which will contribute to improved food security, farmers' livelihood, and overall economic growth. For the information of potential investors, we have rich soil conducive for cultivation, and an estimated 65% of the land is good quality and arable. We have reliable water supply and great potential for irrigation from the River Gambia, which is navigable up to over 300 miles upstream. We have favorable climate conditions with temperatures ranging from 16 to 34 degrees Celsius and an average annual rainfall of 1,096 millimeters. Access to abundant and cheap labor force, tax holidays with corporate turnover for a period ranging between five to eight years, exemption on import sales tax on direct imports of products, well-developed transportation options. As I had mentioned, the River Gambia can be navigated up to 300 miles inland by seagoing vessels, and the port of Banjul is just 26 nautical miles from the Atlantic Ocean. So, investors are encouraged in the following subsectors horticultural production and processing of fruits and vegetables, crop production and processing of rice, maize, millet, sorghum, groundnuts, sesame, soya beans, cashew, cassava, sweet potatoes, carrot, and so on and so forth. Animal production in cattle for meat and dairy, sheep, goat, pigs, rabbits, horses, donkeys, poultry for eggs and white meat and so on. Agricultural mechanization, especially for tractors, harrows, seeders, solar panels, pumps and piping, harvesters, treasures, milling machines, sprayers, etc. Storage and packing materials in the form of cold storage, grain silos, poultry and meat packing mat materials, grain and flour packing materials, Agro-industries being animal feed plants, agro-pharmaceuticals, pesticides, fertilizer plants, vegetable and fruit processing plants, grain processing and packaging machinery, modernization of abattoirs, oil mills for groundnut and sesame oil. Agribusiness and the supply of distribution of agricultural inputs, marketing of agricultural produce, trade fairs, and so on. 
And finally, food processing, the processing of pack and post processing, sorry, and packaging of out of season and exotic fruit and vegetables, freezing, canning, and drying of fruits and vegetables for export, market processing and packaging of high quality nuts and dried fruit for the tourist and export markets, processing and packaging of food juices for domestic and export markets, production of soft drinks for the domestic and regional markets, and so on and so forth. Like I said, the list is really long, but so I'll just stop there for now. The fishing sector in the Gambia is internationally competitive as its marine and river waters are endowed with multi-species fishery of high value export quality species. It contributes about 12% of uh, the gross domestic product. The Gambia's fishing industry is currently dominated by artisanal activity and industrial fishing is still a largely untapped area of opportunity. Along and the Gambia's, along um, the shore of the Gambia's eight kilometer coastline and within its 4,000 square kilometers continental shelf. Over 500 marine species have been reported in Gambian waters, namely grouper, tilapia, mackerel, sardinella, shrimps, prawns, sole, lobster, bonga, red mullet, catfish, and, and many, many more. I won't go through the entire list. So the comparative advantages proffered by the fishing sector in the Gambia are as follows. The country has a liberalized economy and a unique geographical location, making accessibility easy and faster by air and sea to markets in Europe, USA, Asia, and some landlocked African countries. Fishing can be carried out all year round. And the EU ACP Cotonou Agreement provides excellent opportunities for trade in sea food products. And just recently, we signed a multi million dollar deal um, in terms of fishing in the Gambia. Customs and excise duties are not levied on exports of seafood products or on the imported capital equipment and packaging materials. There are again tax holidays for a period of up to five to eight years, depending on the location of the project. And the local population has experience on fishing processing. Investing in fish processing can easily recruit locals in their processing plants. And I can attest to this as I am Lebu by ethnicity and we're traditionally professional fishermen. Fishing vessels registered in the Gambia can easily obtain a license to operate in neighboring Senegal through the reciprocal fishing agreement existing between the two countries. This provides a larger operating zone and better fishing prospects. So for those who wish to invest in the fishing sector, you may consider looking into fish and other agriculture shrimp, oyster, oyster, and crayfish farming. You may look into building and repairs of fishing boats, vessels, and trawlers. You may look into the financing or leasing of fishing vessels, fish processing at industrial levels, smoking, canning, and export of fresh fish, provision of cold storage facilities, and so on and so on. Now, we move to another sector that the Gambia is well known for, as you have seen from the videos played earlier. And this is the tourism sector. Tourism is one of the fastest growing sectors and is considered the main engine that is driving the Gambian economy and contributes to about 20% of the GDP. It is the biggest foreign exchange earner and a major source of employment. The Gambia's rich culture, wildlife, coupled with its beautiful climate and beaches, makes her a perfect place for year round tourism. And after this virus is under control, I urge you all to visit the Gambia. The comparative advantages in doing in the tourism sector in the Gambia are that potential investors who meet the minimum investment threshold of $250,000 are awarded a special investment certificate with the following investment incentives. Tax holidays, again ranging from five to eight years, depending on the location of the project. Free allocation of land on a 50-year lease term with option for renewal of the lease. Exemption from customs duties on capital equipment, spare parts, raw or semi-finished material inputs, and free repatriation of profits. The tourism sector in the Gambia has a highly efficient administrative system for setting up your business. The opportunities in the sector are numerous and far from reaching its potential, its full potential. And there is urgent need, therefore, to further strengthen the industry with investments in the value chain. Investment opportunities exist in the following areas. 
One, the building of hotels and other tourism facilities with hotels of four and five star being the preference. Upgrading of budget hotels to three and four star hotels and building of family villas. Two, ecotourism lodges and resource development and management along the river camp. Three, development of infrastructure for boats, cruises and water sporting activities. Four, bike trails for cycling. Five, development of golf courses and kart racing and recreational parks. And six, tour operations. However, this list has by no means exhausted all the potential areas of investment. The Gambia government is eager to work with investors who are ready to invest in the sector, in the energy sector, to solve the energy problems of the country. And one of the initiatives we have taken up with India is to ratify the International Solar Alliance Framework Agreement. Currently, 98% of the energy supplied by the state-owned utility company, the National Water and Electricity Company, is from fossil fuels. There is significant room for growth in the sector, as only 42% of the population have access to electricity. Viable options for renewable energy sources remain heavily underexplored, and the government is encouraging investors in this area. Again, the investment opportunities in the energy sector are numerous, but I will mention only a few as seen on the slide. Uh, so electricity generation, transmission and distribution, renewable energy sources, solar PV cells, and associated equipment, wind turbines and biomass, coal-fired power stations, liquefied petroleum gases, training of generator technicians at NAWE. The government offers investors competitive fee in tariffs and power purchase agreements, and we're exploring the possibility of such collaborations with the International Solar Alliance. In the mining sector, the country does not have a large mining industry, nor does it possess large discovered deposits of precious minerals or gems yet. However, their deposits of lower value minerals in certain areas. Now, despite being lower value, there are maximum profits to be made by investing in the sector. The government has put in place policies to attract foreign direct investments, such as fee repatriation of capital and profits, special investment certificates and constitutional guarantees, safeguards against nationalization and expropriation of investments. Opportunities in this sector mainly exist initially in exploration for minerals and oil and gas. Successful mining of sand for valuable minerals such as zircon, titanium, laterite, and silica near the coast of south of the capital is being done. The country has very rich clay deposits which can be used as input in ceramic industries, the making of bricks, tiles, cookware, and tableware, and so on. Now, this is where I tell potential investors to start preparing for investment in the Gambia as the discovery of oil off the West African coastline has increased the prospect of striking oil in the Gambian waters. Oil companies have started conducting seismic research of the coast of the Gambia in the Atlantic Ocean. We hope and pray that some of it is found and tapped very soon in the Gambia. The current crisis has revealed that the after that healthcare, one of the country's priority areas of investment, has to be ICT. The Gambian government has realized the positive multiplier effects of a developed communication infrastructure in creating the necessary support structures for accelerated socioeconomic growth. Due to the liberalization of this subsector, investment opportunities have been created. Currently, the country has four mobile phone operators, six internet companies, one public owned television and radio station, two private TV stations and several private radio stations, one of which is owned by His Excellency Manga, who will say a few words later. Though the Gambia has registered significant progress in this area, there's still room for the subsector to grow. In pursuit of government strategies, plans, and policy objectives, the following are areas open for investment in the sector. Internet services, mobile operator services, prepaid service platforms, cable and satellite TV broadcasting, access centers, and radio stations. Again, this, is, this list is not exhaustive. There are more, more um, options for investments. The Gambia's financial sector has been growing in numbers and consists of more than 14 commercial banks with an average foreign equity of over 60%. We have several insurance companies, several foreign exchange bureaus, and microfinance institutions and other non-bank finance companies. 
Through well-articulated policies and programs, the Gambia is being viewed as a viable, viable destination by major financial institutions from both within and outside the African continent. Financial sector in the Gambia, though competitive, has room for new institutions and more so new products. With the global trend moving towards universal banking and offshore banking, investments in these areas can enhance the Gambia's competitiveness internationally. The Gambia is well served both by air and sea transportation and the government aspires to fully capitalize on the strategic location of the Gambia in order to make the country a regional hub for air navigation in Africa. Banjul Port is one of the most efficient and safest in the region. And from there is access provided to both ocean going vessels and smaller vessels, which can navigate up to 300 miles into the interior of the River Gambia. Even countries along the coast of West Africa with their own ports, disembark their cargo at Banjul Port and further transport overland all due to the competitive advantage our port offers. Opportunities exist in this sector to improve existing services, add new services, or provide services not currently available, including transportation along the River Gambia. Investment opportunities in this sector include, but are not limited, to sea cargo services, both for the Gambia and transshipment to regional markets, river transportation, both for cargo and passengers, air cargo services, airport services, passenger air links to regional hubs, and both direct to Europe and the USA. Again, this current pandemic has shown the world that the health sector is among the priority sectors that would immensely benefit from the forward-looking programs and policies of the government. Though the country's health outcomes have gradually and steadily improved over the last two decades. It, however, continues to face numerous challenges. Thus, partnerships are required among public and private sectors to build infrastructure and critical resources required to deliver quality care. Healthcare investors are eligible for special investment certificates for tax holidays for a period of eight years and exemptions for importation of heavy machines and medical equipment. There are no restrictions on foreign investors converting or repatriating funds out of the Gambia. For the veterinary sector, livestock census conducted reveal that annually there is a significant monetary loss of meat to the national economy and food security due to ailments of livestock. So in its ambition to make the Gambia a regional center of excellence in healthcare, the government is interested in investment opportunities in the health and veterinary services sector in order to provide nationwide access to medical equipment, supplies, and personnel. Investors are encouraged to invest in the following. One, supply of quality pharmaceuticals. Two, capacity building for medical professionals and technical staff. Three, other medical supplies and equipment, as well as agro-pharmaceuticals for veterinary drugs for the animal industry. We have already started working with major hospitals hospitals like BLK and Medanta and always welcome more interested parties. The government has prioritized tertiary and higher education research as well as vocational training and skills development as an integral part of the broader economic strategies to further develop the economy and promote employment opportunities. Provision of technical and vocational education and training by the public sector is relatively limited. There are nine government-owned skills training centers in the country, while the vast majority is provided by the private sector. Foreign investors are being encouraged by the government through the foreign, through, sorry, foreign direct investment and public-private partnerships to invest, and those interested in this vital, important sector have investment opportunities in vocational training in carpentry, welding, masonry, etc. Development of specialized skills in electronics, computing, etc. Curriculum development and assessment standards and procedures, among many others. The Gambia's manufacturing sector continues to be underdeveloped with a limited manufacturing base focused mainly at the domestic market and utilizing a limited range of skills and technology. The sector's share of GDP is, accounts for approximately 5.5% thus forming the basis of an opportunity for investment in order to expand industrial production and development. 
The government of the Gambia has identified the enormous potentials in this sector and offers special investors, invest, incentives sorry, to investors in this sector, such as food and drink processing and packaging, machinery and manufacturing and services for agricultural, food and fisheries industries, plastics for consumer market and for the construction industry, stainless steel fabrication, basic electronics assembly, chemical manufacturing of fertilizers, soap, cosmetics, and so on, textile manufacturing, for example, fibers, yarns, and fabrics, pharmaceutical manufacturing or packaging, and healthcare products like complementary medicines, medical devices, and so on. The president of the Gambia India Business Council, um, the owner of Farmfresh, is prominent in one of these areas and will request that he says a few words later. Now, I hope we have sparked some interest in the many, in sorry, many of the participants who have come to invest in the Gambia and process for business registration has been simplified and requires the submission of the following documents with the registrar of companies. Memorandum of Association, Articles of Association, Receipts of payment of stamp duty and business registration fees from the income tax department. Businesses in the Gambia may be registered as a company, a sole proprietorship, a partnership, or other forms of businesses, namely cooperatives, subsidiaries of other companies, and so on. Um, further information about all this can be obtained from, from DIPA. Again, further information about the guarantees can be obtained from DIPA, but I'll quickly mention a few points. There is relief from double taxation of any person resident in the Gambia who pays or is liable to pay taxes in any year of assessment in a Commonwealth country and some other countries. The Constitution of the Gambia and the Investment Promotion Act of 2001 and the Free Zone Act of 2001 guarantees and safeguards against nationalization and expropriation of investments and also contain provisions against expropriation of the properties of investors. The Gambia is also a member to the International Center for the Settlement of Investment Disputes and also a member of the Multilateral Investment Guarantee Agency of the World Bank. Both of these memberships provide guarantees to foreign investors against losses caused by non-commercial risks and the settlement of investment disputes. I have mentioned GAIPA a lot throughout my presentation. And that is because their mandate and vision is to promote a conducive environment, attract investments, develop exports, and support businesses with the overriding objective of contributing towards employment creation and wealth generation in the Gambia. The Gambia Chamber of Commerce and Industry, also a very important body in the Gambia, was established with a vision to foster a more proactive service and policy-oriented interactive collaboration between the Chamber, its members, government, development and strategic partners with the objective of creating and supporting private enterprise as well as improving the business environment of the Gambia. Now, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, to conclude, let me reiterate that the Gambia has far more to offer than the three S's, sun, sand and sea, which is popularly known for the Gambia can also be your investment haven in Africa, offering peace, stability, and growth in an efficient and relaxed atmosphere. Thank you all for listening. I will take off my screen and send it back to you, Ms. Mod Ms. Moderator. And I will switch my video back on. Thank you, Excellency, for the excellent presentation. We have Mr. Ram Mohan with us, and he's our honorary counsel and also a learned businessman from Gambia. Over to you, sir. Please say a few words. Uh, well, I think, uh, well, Excellency uh, Janaba and all other excellencies and guests here, the uh, Indo-Africa Chamber of Commerce, uh, Sunanda, thank you very much for this opportunity to be able to uh, speak about a country where, uh, which has been my home. Uh, we normally say home away from home. I guess India is my home away from home and Gambia is my home right now. I've been here since 1998. That's 22 years in the Gambia, uh, having lived in Africa for about 30 years now. 
I, when I moved to Gambia in 98, it was on a, on a small business mission. I came here from Senegal and I uh, landed here in, in 98 uh, December and in 99 January I set up my house here and I've been in the same house same place uh, here so that is just to show you how warm and welcoming uh, the Gambia is uh, so I was going to speak about business but I think uh, Jennifer has said it all and she's covered every aspect of uh, the, the potential of doing business in Gambia yes it's a small country uh, the size of business is uh, limited to its local population, but then Gambia has always been the gateway to West Africa. So there's a potential for people to come and set up industry here. And I talk about industry, I'm not talking business traders. We have traders, we have people coming to do trade. What the Gambia and Africa need is, I think, uh, for the moment, uh, people to invest in industry. Uh, Africa is going to be the food basket of the world, especially with uh, pandemics of this nature coming up. Food is going to be in shortage. So there is, there will be a huge scope for somebody investing in fertile land with a river, with uh, access to Europe, access to Americas, access, virtually you're in the center of the world here, uh, and access to other African countries as well for markets. So uh, there is a huge potential in uh, in coming, albeit being a small country. Uh, there's, uh, there's a scope in the health sector as well. There's, I mean, uh, health is a major concern these days. So there's a, there's a potential to invest in the health sector here and to create a hub uh, quite a few Europeans coming down to Africa now to, for, for their health treatment. So I think there's a huge scope for the health sector. There's a infrastructure building is another area where I think there's a huge potential. There's a, it is a challenge right now. Power, energy is a, is a challenge. Navek, uh, as uh, Her Excellency mentioned, is being worked on. There are huge projects coming up, but it is, every time there's a challenge, there is a huge opportunity as well distribution and looking at different ways of uh, generating power, solar power as well. My principal business in these uh, last 22 years have been, I've uh, been a pioneer in the cashew business of agriculture in exporting cashew nuts and uh, sesame uh, to the rest of the world. Uh, yes, we will, at, there will be a time when we are looking at uh, adding value to the same products here. So there is a potential for that as well. There are challenges to be met in terms of uh, energy costs, getting uh, the labor trained, but that is where training and capacity building becomes a, an opportunity for somebody else. Uh, so there are huge uh, opportunities. This is coming back to the Indian aspect of it, since we're talking to India, uh, as an Indian, there are, uh, there are possibly about 1,500 uh, plus Indians here. We have about 1,000 registered on our list. The Indian embassy is uh, very close by. It's a, it's, it's a 20 minute flight from here to Dakar uh, to, uh, to get to the embassy, but you don't need to do that because of electronic communication and having the Honorary Consul's office here uh, facilitates uh, life, uh, the life of Indians here as well. Uh, in, being English speaking, it's, life is pretty comfortable. Uh, it's easy to communicate. The Gambian people by nature are very hospitable. They've had, tourism has been a major sector which has uh, looked after the economy for many years. So uh, going with tourism means hospitality and uh, Gambians are naturally hospitable, very hospitable and very friendly. Uh, so that's something that made, uh, made the, these 1,500 people come and make Gambia their home. Uh, if you look at the business opportunities, uh, I mean, the business is being run here. The supermarkets are mainly uh, primarily run by Indians. So there's um, a, a large availability of Indian products. Uh, so for any Indian wanting to come here, you're going to be perfectly at home. Uh, Gambians love Indian culture and food. So a lot of Indian restaurants here. Uh, Genova can vouch for that as well. <laughs> and and you, we do have uh, the culture. I mean, the number of Gambians involved in our culture, in song, in, uh, well, call it Bollywood or, uh, you know, singing Indian songs. The, the culture is something which they, they love culture. And uh, it's amazing to see the culture they have as well. The, the dances, the, their, their uh, masquerades. Uh, it's, there's an amazing possibility for exchange of culture here uh, in the Gambia. Apart from that, I would, uh, I would uh, uh, the, like I've told you, the, the, uh, the cost of living as well uh, is and far cheaper than most of the other, other, many Europeans come down and settle here, settle their properties in the in UK and come and settle down in Gambia because it's, it's uh, easily accessible. It's a five and a half hour flight from Europe and you have got access to the beaches and 
a cost of living and conditions that are far, far, far. The, the style of living, yes, you may not have the super highways and the, the ultra large malls uh, or theaters, but you do have uh, loads of places to visit. The Gambia River is full of culture again. Uh, I don't know how many of you have read the book Roots. Uh, Roots speaks about Kunta Kinte who comes and finds his home. And uh, that home is Jufire, a small little village uh, in the, on the River Gambia. Uh, there's James Island, uh, Kunta Kinte Island. Uh, now uh, it's a UNESCO heritage site where you can see the, uh, the, how the history of the slave trade from these regions started. So Gambia is a, a place full of culture, full of music. You've heard some of the beautiful music in the background, the Kora. Uh, with uh, Sona Jabate singing the song Gambia. I mean, it's, it's something that uh, I can listen to over and over again. Uh, there are the challenges. I must, must speak of the challenges as well. Energy currently is a problem, but it is being addressed by, uh, by NAVEC. Uh, so visit, uh, been people coming and investing will have to keep that in consideration that they will have to build up and help the government build up its energy sector. Yeah, it is happening, so the, it's, not, it's not to say that uh, it, it cannot be addressed. It is being addressed very well. Uh, the education sector is something which is building up beautifully. I think, it, yes, they've had challenges in the past with a very little concentration. Now Gambia has started moving up. So you have a youthful population eager to learn, eager to work. Uh, and uh, I think that is something which uh, investors in this country can tap into. The health sector, as you've already mentioned, uh, I think... I mentioned this in the beginning. I would love my plea would be to ask investors to come into industry, the food processing industry, the mangoes. This country is blessed with mangoes. I mean, uh, in India, you wouldn't see these mangoes. Uh, the the taste, the availability. It just needs somebody to come and invest in the sector, knowing the sector, knowing the market. You can get access to all the European markets in five hour, <laughs> five hours from here by just investing in mango. So people who love mangoes should come here. It is, uh, the mango is brilliant. There's a variety called Jure, which is, is so delicious. I, I think it puts many Indian mangoes to shame. Um, uh, I, I mean, I, I hope nobody takes this against me, but I, I do believe that the mangoes you get here are, and the abundance in which you can get them here. Uh, so these are things which I think we must uh, bring in, try to bring in as many small and medium scale industries. Uh, the government of India is, a concert, is looking at uh, traditional medicine and uh, use of herbs. And, and that is, this is some place where you can, you can, at every nook and corner, you can find traditional medicine uh, available. So a collaboration between India and uh, the Gambia uh, uh, is, uh, uh, I think that the potential is huge. I, I, I believe, uh, Put with the with the Jenaba, excellent Her Excellency in uh, Delhi, and with our embassy in Dakar. There's a lot we can all do together. And of course, I'm, I'm my doors are always open. Uh, I'm um, I don't uh, follow too much of protocol, so I, uh, you can pick up the phone and call me anytime if there's anybody wants to know more about this wonderful country. Thank you very much again to the in, uh, Indo Indo Africa Chamber of Commerce, Her Excellency uh, Jenaba, and her wonderful team in uh, Delhi. Uh, we keep in constant touch. I do believe uh, that our embassy may join uh, Ambassador Srinivas. Uh, should, I, I, I hope he does join as well. And uh, Sunanda, thank you so much for this. My pleasure, sir. My pleasure. And I'm uh, chatting with uh, our uh, ambassador, Mr. Shivi Srinivas, and I'm going to give him the link till the time we can listen to Mr. Lamin Manga. And uh, soon after his presentation, I will see that our ambassador also join us and say a few words. So over to you, Mr. Manga. Greetings from Banjul. I hope you can all hear me. Uh, greetings to uh, uh, your excellencies here present, uh, the Indo-African Chamber of Commerce and all uh, the delegates on this webinar. I'm very pleased to be here and uh, was very honored to um, have attended the Kumb, um, uh, being probably uh, one of the first Muslims ever to, to, to visit uh, your lovely New Delhi and, and be a part of the Kumela um, two years ago. I think um, I'll, I'll take a bit of a different slide because uh, Excellency Jainaba and uh, Excellency Mohan have pretty much just exhausted everything I would have said, you know, but uh, the relationship between these two countries has been excellent over the years. We, we all know Nahi, Nahi Karunga, 
simply because um, the Indians were the very first uh, to, to set up cinemas in this side of the world. And I think uh, this is probably one of the first things that needs to be highlighted. The cinemas need to come back, which is the reason why we're all pleased to hear Amin Tabachan is, is, is well and, and uh, is out of hospital today. You know, um, this relationship has stretched on because when I went to uh, study in the UK, I must have say I, I must say I made a lot of friends um, using this Nahekarunga tagline, and and it just made me friends easily because we had Indian cinemas um, in time, and all of us watched all these films over the years. And uh, I would remember working at uh, one of the chain supermarkets Tesco's in the UK, where. Um, uh, most of the mangoes, by the way, are exported by an Indian-owned company in the Gambia. Um, Mr. Mohan, I'm sure, will uh, testify on this. Um, Radvil Farms. So all uh, Gambia, uh, made, in, made in Gambia mangoes in, in the streets of London, sent by an Indian company. So the, re the relationship has been, uh, been going on forever. Uh, it goes on to buttress on the point that Gambia is the closest English speaking country from Europe into Africa, uh, which is just five and a half hours from all these markets. So it's, it's a very close access market. And I wanted to just buttress on a few points that um, they talked about. I think uh, Mr. Manga's uh, network has some issue. But uh, it is my profound privilege to welcome Mr. G.V. Srinivas, our uh, Indian High Commissioner for Senegal and Gambia. Uh, good afternoon, sir, and privilege to have you here. And I would like you to say a few words, sir. Thank you. Good afternoon, Excellency. Thank you. Good morning, uh, Zainaba. How are you? Very good, and thank you. Good morning, Ramohan. Also, so nice of you to organize this excellent session. Thank you to Mr. Ramohan to early morning inform me about this entire uh, session, I could not have helped but to join, given that this is personally a bread and butter for me. And therefore, uh, even as I'm the High Commissioner designate to the Gambia, I thought of taking the floor to make a couple of points here. And as others have pointed out, Ambassador uh, Zenaba in her keynote address has practically covered the entire ground and laid it for us to actually begin discussions from there. Ram Mohan has uh, added personal experience and all positives which he has. And the moment he speaks, you can see how happy he is exactly about the whole country. And we've been wanting to go there, if for nothing else, to pick up all those Indian produce, I mean, which comes in the first class, fresh variety in the Gambia. That indicates to you how many Indians are settling there, uh, supporting, patronizing the Indian stores. Now, the most important point, which all of this adds up to is the fact that there is a region in this part of the world, which is awaiting to be exploited to be used for the mutual benefit. We cannot really undermine the importance of the climate. Indians all like a little bit of warm climate, something which is uh, like a heaven here. The entire right across the whole year, you would be finding the weather to be so nice that you start wondering as to why you ever live anywhere else. Now, after having heard all these nice stories, the question which will come to the minds of everyone, particularly those business people who had to actually put in their money, risk, and perhaps also profit in due course of time. Now they need to know what to do. My pitch for them would be something obvious, which would be to tell them that you need to exhaust the online channels to have the communication with your counterparts. And thereafter, when the time is right to undertake your back visit and conclude. But extensive conversation without any movement on the ground does not necessarily help either. Not that they're not doing it, but we are on the two extremes. Either people sit in India asking perpetually questions, thousands of them, or they land here totally ill-prepared. Both are the extremes which are not necessarily great ideas. They need to make do with the sessions of the nature which you are organizing today, or a multiple of them which we had organized in the past, including very specific ones on the Gambia itself. The mayor of Kanifing, Benzuda, had come and met me based on which we had organized a similar webinar identifying four particular areas. Now, those areas we take directly rather than to the chambers as to the industry in the hope that they would be able to make sense of those opportunities, take the conversation forward, interact with the counterparts possible, understand not only the opportunities, but the challenges, which is very, very important as Ramon was alluding to, but I'm sure everybody would be aware 
that as they're counting the profit, they need to also know what they need to invest, whether as a way of relationship or as a resource to cover the gaps. At times they have to bat and ball from the both sides in the interest that the project actually takes off and delivers what it is supposed to deliver to the benefit of the two sides. I would only want to at this stage show briefly a screen. Hopefully you're able to see what I'm showing you here, which is nothing but the embassy's website. Let me see. Can uh, Ramon confirm that you're able to see? Yes. We can see. You can. Yes, we can. We can see the screen. It's a very brief one, not an over pitch for the embassy's website, but the point is the following that there are multiple links, but I would invite your attention to, for example, this what's new. Now, the moment you put the what's new there, then that will take you. One second, this uh, icon is interfering. I don't know how to do this. A little bit uh, of a complication on the website. Yeah, one second. Yeah, yeah. So, as you see in the what's new, there will be many of them which we organize regularly. For example, there are a couple of them on Gambia itself. As you put the keyboard, you get the Gambia. We had organized, for example, one session on the digital food processing and soon to come would be on the engineering. Now we need to actually scratch the surface to go beyond the macro to the level of the company. And that is when, because no matter how much I speak, how emotionally I speak, whether of India or of the Gambia, the real deal will be done by the company. Therefore, we need to approach the right companies right from the beginning, not only in Mumbai or Delhi, wherever we're based, but to the including uh, the regions, the cities, uh, which are all coming to the company. Now, with that in mind, we regularly organize these things. The next one which we will be having would be on the subject of engineering. I end up by stating that please do visit, particularly those people who have been enthused with the Gambia, to look it up and see whether any of the things which we are underlining would be of interest to you. Thank you very much. Back to you. So I end from here. Thank you very much. Yeah. Joining us. And uh, before you could close, I would like to inform you that sir, we propose to organize a virtual B2B meeting month of September. And we would like to invite you and we'll write to our high commissioner also. And uh, we would like to bring the object is to bring uh, the business community, both of Gambia and India together, especially on those four sectors where we have thought of one is agriculture, one was fishery, one was skill development training and one was uh, veterinary product. So, uh, High Commissioner, thank you very much for being here in a short while. I'm grateful and honored indeed to receive you. And uh, we have, I think, Mr. Manga again, if I can uh, ask Mr. Manga because uh, he left in between. Yes, I'll be very brief this time around. Yeah, yeah. yeah um, thanks for having me back. Yeah. Uh, one of the issues we have with um, electricity. <laughs> that uh, was but um, Mr. Mohan did, you know, uh, talk about Gambia being a re export hub, which is one of the reasons why you know Gambia has been re-exporting most of the cashew that's been coming off uh, the region, particularly from Guinea-Bissau and out. So I think. Uh, food processing and adding value, it's something that really needs to be looked at. Um, you walk into any supermarket in Gambia, which by the way is mostly owned by you know, uh, uh, the community of Indians, you will hardly find um, uh, mango juice that is made in the Gambia. We have mangoes being thrown around everywhere. This is just a buttress on the point of what uh, Excellency Mohan was talking about. And you will not even find one made in the Gambia, mango juice. So I think um, uh, the talk of processing is, you know, is something that uh, this community needs to look into. It's um, a very easy market access to Europe and America. And we have signed a lot of conventions like the Agoa and into the European markets where you could process in the Gambia and re-export to these markets. Um, you would have heard about, about the African continental free trade area, uh, which I think um, in time, hopefully after all these um, uh, post-COVID uh, worries, um, where you could be a, a platform to re-exporting most of what you, know, you produce, even into um, uh, the whole 53 country market, which is over a billion. Um, value addition, processing, 
access to creating a platform industries, I think this is um, uh, something that is much, much needed in the country. Um, uh, one of the um, other markets that needs to be looked into today, which is uh, available in the market, is um, uh, the financial sector. Um, I, I probably would just need to mention that uh, one of uh, the oldest banks in Gambia is up for grabs. It's actually called Megabank. I think it's just good to throw in this platform uh, to look into. Uh, Megabank has been in existence for uh, um, over three decades and uh, it's been run by uh, the central bank of the Gambia, but it's not the business of the central bank to, to manage a commercial bank. So, um, you know, with a letter of intent, I think. Um, uh, with only a thousand uh, Indians in Gambia, but they're playing a very meaningful role in, in our economy today. So I think uh, it is worth also uh, look, looking into um, uh, the financial sector. I, I think with those words, I'll just stop there and allow the, um, uh, the, the meeting to go ahead. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Manga. I think your uh, network bandwidth is low. So thank you very much for those things. What uh, we were expecting the uh, president of Gambia India Council, Mr. Nijay was supposed to join, but uh, I don't see him, he's online. But meanwhile, if I can request uh, our High Commissioner, Her Excellency, to launch the digital supplement, we have brought out the digital supplement uh, in cooperation with the High Commissioner's office in India. And uh, uh, we declare this official launch by the hand of the High Commissioner here and the soft copy of the same will be available after day after tomorrow to each and every person. So Excellency, please do this honor. Okay, I hereby declare the digital supplement as launched. Thank you. Excellency and congratulations. Uh, now, uh, uh, some few questions uh, on behalf of the people who are asking. Excellency, there are people from Vietnam who joined us and people from Dubai who have joined us and a couple of them are from the neighboring uh, West African countries have also joined us. Uh, one question is there that uh, people are interested in skill development and they are accredited by Government of India and they are looking how they can enter into the Gambia market? That was my first question. Should I ask you all or will you go one by one? Uh, we can go by one by one. I think uh, fine, so please answer this. So there's several avenues to enter into the skills development um, sector. And on a personal level, um, I'm from academia. I'm not a career diplomat. So this, is one of, this has been one of my high priority sectors that I've been focusing on. So I've been communicating with a lot of the top universities um, in India, first of all, you know, obviously to try and get some scholarships for our students to come over here. Because um, what I have discovered whilst in academia, that, that India is one of the top institutions for knowledge acquisition. And it is not something that is known the world over. So I think it's really important that India now puts it, um, itself on the world map of education. India's universities um, come down, I think about 200 on the Times Higher Education Supplement, but they can be much higher than that because they score the same as the Western universities in terms of teaching, in terms of um, industrial placement, in terms of research. The only place where they come down is because of international outlook. They don't have as many international students as the Western universities. So I think there's one area that we can start working on, exchanging of students so that Indian universities are placed higher on the, on the leagues. And um, that way, um, the, the, the international students immediately wish to apply to Indian universities rather than to the Western world. We also have lecturer and um, exchanges in addition to that, where we'll be having lecturers going over to the, to the Gambia 
to lecture at the University of the Gambia and vice versa. We have um, you know, other cultural engagements with them. But in terms of people from India who want to actually invest in the education sector in the Gambia, we have the National Accreditation and Quality Assurance Authority. They have all of the information that will be required. And I, I hope, um, Sunanda, you'll be able to add a link onto your website um, for them. It's a National Accreditation and Quality Assurance Authority, and they're semi-autonomous under the Ministry of Higher Education, Research, Science, and Technology. Now, areas that they can go to is to open up skills development institutes. There's a high demand for that right now. In the education policy of the Gambia, we have a special section in there for technical vocational education training, um, where we're trying to get as many of um, the population, the intelligent students moving away from straight route formal education and moving into um, entrepreneurship and skills development. So there are great opportunities there and the ministry will be um, very, very supportive of people wanting to invest in that area. If they don't want to set up the, the actual um, institutions themselves, they can collaborate with the existing institutions. So we've got the Gambia Technical Training Institution. They can collaborate with them and um, you know, offer them courses, like we said, curriculum development and things like those. those are, that's another investment area. And um, they can provide equipment as well to these skills development um, institutions. Right now, the Indian government is um, one that is contributing to the Gambia Technical Training Institute. And they um, provided, I don't know if you can help me with the name, I can't remember the exact name, but they have um, provided them with some material um, for skills development. Uh, this was the incubation center of, uh, that was set up Very uh, good. To, to train. Uh, we had, uh, we had uh, two, two centers set up. One was the food uh, processing and one was the technical training. Institute uh, technical training institute is doing quite well actually. The uh, food uh, the food processing needs to be revamped. Uh, yeah. that's it. Thank you, thank you, Ram, for reminding me of that. So, so those are those institutions that we have there. Another thing that can be done to get further information to the exact places to um, invest in skills development, we have the Youth Empowerment Project, which is under the Ministry of Trade and funded by um, some international organizations. ITC and another institution, uh, the European Union, I believe. Now, there we have people who are doing um, entrepreneurial skills development, and people from India here can collaborate with those graduates from those institutions and work with them to set up um, to set up further further. Okay, I'm just being told. Yeah, it's funded by the EU to set up. Um, you know, business, business startups and, and, and things like that. And um, they can also provide capacity building over here. So as part of the empowerment project, they actually come here to some to Oroville and some to other places um, to, to develop their skills. So that's one way of, you know, ensuring that investments, the funds don't necessarily have to go into the Gambia, but then they can also come here um, and, and invest in those projects. So there are several avenues, but like I said, we will send a link to the National Accreditation and Quality of Assurance, the Ministry of Higher Education, Research, Science and Technology, and some of the other institutions in the Gambia who can give them further details for that. Thank you, Excellency. Uh, one of the members who, uh, uh, who is already in to uh, manufacturing of modular tensile structure, the roofing. He would like to put a small uh, outlet, factory outlet in uh, Gambia. Uh, what is the scope for that? Like to be in Gambia, he would like to penetrate the rest of the ECOWAS market. So how does uh, he should approach? Um, the best way to do that, again, I, I spoke a lot about GCCI, the Gambia Chamber of Commerce and Industry, and I spoke a lot about GAIPO, the Gambia Investment and Export Promotion Agency. Now, they have um, all of the information that is required for people wanting to invest in the Gambia. They'll give them further details about the, the procedure, the processes, the incentives that they're eligible for, the um, export, um, what are they called, economic zones, where um, they can set up their um, factories, and given free land by the government and so on. Um, but there is a huge scope for that. As um, you know, you just saw one of the challenges that Excellency Mohan spoke about was lack of electricity in the Gambia. 
And whilst we're talking to Excellency Manga, the national um, body cut of the electricity as well. So there's huge scope for investing in renewable energy and rooftop solar panels um, are one of those. And he can rest assured that with the actual development and processing and building of the solar panels in the Gambia, he has a market for it. And as you mentioned, you know, access to Senegal, Mali, and you know, all the surrounding countries is easy from, from the Gambia for him. And Mr. Mohan you know, has a close personal friend as well who has started um, their own factories in the Gambia. So they can, he can discuss with them and they can tell him you know, the trials and tribulations that they had to go through and how they're now benefiting from investing in a manufacturing plant in the Gambia. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, one more question that was regarding agriculture. There are some couple of good companies who are representing the sugar industries and they are already based in most of the African countries. They wanted to enter into Gambia so far as commercial farming or farmer technology transfer is concerned. Uh, can you little elaborate about what is the scope and how they have to go about it, madam? Again, one of the biggest farms actually in the Gambia who does quite a lot of exports to Britain is owned by an Indian. Am I right, um, Ram? Yes, correct. Ram uh, te technically, uh, technically Indian, they're based in UK actually, uh, British, um, uh, British uh, Indians, as we may call them. But they, they, the technology, the farming uh, personnel were initially when they set it up were all from India. And they're doing quite well with the mangoes and uh, the mango exports. Agriculture, I mean, I, I must, I must uh, reiterate this. Agriculture is an amazing sector to invest in, uh, to come in here, because this is the future for uh, Africa is going to be the food basket of the world. Uh, and the Gambia, with its close proximity to uh, the markets where they are moving away from agriculture, the, the uh, European markets and the, uh, the US markets, South American markets, you can uh, you can access these markets quite easily from the Gambia. Yeah, um, and one of the things that this crisis has shown us, that apart from healthcare and, and, and technology infrastructure, agriculture is one of the most important sectors. Now, the, the Gambia is um, encouraging a lot of people to come and invest in farming. Actually, when President um, His Excellency Ramnath Kovind came to the Gambia, His Excellency President Adam Abara specifically requested that we have more business investors coming into the agricultural sector. So the political will is there. If we have people who want to invest, whatever leeway um, that is required, I'm sure coming down from the president's office, they will get um, all the necessary support for that. And um, also it's got to do with um, using technology in farming, um, mechanized farming, industrialized farming, and, and things like that. So we, we have um, placed it in a priority in, in terms of bilateral engagements that we want to focus on. In terms of accessing um, consultancies and, and advice about how to go about with some of these things, Excellency Mango over here has a consultancy company that advises people on how to set up their companies in the Gambia and does the relevant introductions through the, the various institutions that I've mentioned, like I and GCCI. So that is, yes, a very, very um, important sector to invest in. And if this person can contact, contact my high commission, I will personally see to it that he gets to speak to the, the relevant people in the country. Thank you, Excellency. Uh, my questions will not come to an end. I wanted to ask you one more question about pharmaceutical. We have a couple of members, as you know, India is very good uh, in pharmaceutical. So there are a couple of uh, companies which are based on manufacturing generic product and all, would like to, let's say, enter into Gambia. Would you be able to, you or Mr. Mohan can highlight, what is the time frame for registration and what is the scope so we can you know, motivate people? And second question related to that is setting up a laboratory. Uh, for uh, uh, this testing, etc. What is the scope in Gambia? Over to you. Um, this is, again, based because of what has recently happened, one of the most important sectors that we want to see um, uh, hi highlighted, you know, in terms of cooperation between India and the Gambia. India is known as the pharmacy of the world, and we would like this to you know, reflect um, onto the Gambia as well. There are a lot of people um, over the past one and a half years who have told me that they're really interested in setting up um, pharmacies in, in the Gambia using medication from, from India, but you know, it hasn't quite uh, manifested itself yet. 
And um, I think my first secretary is, is also here. He's one of the per people that you know, complains the most about the cost of medication in the Gambia. And then you've got the generic version in India here, and it's about an eighth of the cost of what it is in the Gambia. And you know, has been encouraging a lot of people to go into the pharmaceutical um, industry with, with India. In terms of the time frame for setting up these um, organizations and companies like that, maybe um, Mr. Mohan and Mr. Manga can, can give you um, more detailed information about that, but I don't know about the time frames for setting those things up. But I know it is a priority sector. Um, uh, Lamin, if I may uh, just uh, add a few uh, words here before you, you take the floor on this one. The, uh, the pharmaceutical industry for many years was, uh, was, was a bit uh, restricted in the, uh, in the previous years and the government has opened out uh, right now. Uh, so defining a time frame may be a little difficult right now because they're in the process of change uh, of opening out the pharmaceutical industry. Many more businesses from India have come in. But one must understand that uh, if you come in here with a trading, uh, with, with the idea of trading, then it's a, it's a very small market. And uh, each country, uh, the neighboring country, uh, Senegal, has its own rules and regulations. Uh, Guinea-Bissau has its own rules and regulations as far as pharmaceuticals are concerned. So the uh, the uh, the... I believe that the intent must be to set up uh, some sort of uh, industry here rather than set up a trading. Trading, there are quite a few people in it. It's, uh, I think, a crowded market. Uh, uh, yes, competition can bring prices down further. Uh, at the same time, my advice would be to try to look at the, uh, at, at the setting up of, uh, of industry here. Uh, there's the medical board here, which can advise people. Or the, I think it's called the um, uh, dentistry and... Uh, uh, medicine board of the Gambia, along with uh, yes, with GAIPA and GAIPA and uh, uh, GCCI, who would be able to. I, I would recommend that everybody listening in, please get down the details of GCCI. They're very prompt. They do respond uh, when 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 it is serious. If it's just a generic uh, request, uh, not many of us request. I mean, I get requests every day in my mailbox saying we want to deal in uh, iron sheets and uh, medicines and cars and, and tires and these kind of generic requests uh, normally don't get responded to so when you when somebody wants good feedback just as our ambassador uh, our high commissioner gv Srinima said please make sure that uh, apart from the communication you there is a serious intent to research what you want to do uh, research it as best as possible before you start shooting off mails and saying, okay, send me the information on all of this. GCCI, I, I redirect everything to GCCI and GCCI, if it's a serious request, they do respond uh, pretty well. It's a good idea to go through the GCCI because there, are, there will be disputes uh, quite often. There's always disputes in international trade and agreement. So make sure you go through GCCI. And when we realize the person is serious, he travels down here, then we can start the introductions to various departments, to various ministries. Otherwise, there's no point just taking somebody and say, okay, please be a little more serious in your uh, in whoever's making requests. That's the one request from our side. Uh, it's not easy handling so many uh, general generic requests. Uh, Smanga? Need, need I say further? I mean, um, Excellency Mohan just said everything. But just to let you know that I am well equipped with Indian drugs because it's more competitive and it's worth looking into. It's a market to look at. Um, thanks to Her Excellency. I, I would always request when coming to Gambia, bring me as, as many as you can because, um, uh, you know, it is, it is a relatively small market. But uh, if you look at a country like Senegal, it's probably 20 to 25 percent more expensive, which is right next door. Uh, the regulations, of course, are different. And uh, as Mr. Mohan rightly said, you know, you have to go through that uh, dentistry and medical board uh, for licensing. It is um, uh, not much of a hurdle if you've got all, you know, um, uh, the trades and, uh, and, and, uh, and, the, and the relevant uh, papers um, available. I will um forward all these details to uh, to her excellency shortly uh so that he she can redirect these um to to, to the forum thank you thank you mr Manga. excellency we had last time given a request to the president the chamber of commerce secretary general gambia and we have exchanged the draft with them for uh, signing an mou because normally what happened if it is chamber to chamber then we can exchange so many things like at mr mohan has said people are interested we can you know put them in touch with so they do not uh, disturb our diplomat and all those people for doing trading etc 
and so far as a dispute is concerned we do have a le legal department within the chamber the arbitration firm where we are resolving the dispute without an actual arbitration so far as india and africa is concerned so my request to you excellency the high commissioner if you can recommend me once again to the secretary general of the gambia chamber of commerce let me revive once again because i was talking to them since in 2014 15 and in between then there was a gap so if you can reconnect me to the new people we will start once again thus uh, there is one party who is interested in put a manufacturing plant of domestic lpg gas cylinder and refilling plant do we have scope in gambia for that excellency yes we do um currently again you know i have people on the ground who can correct me but we do have one or two companies i think one gambian owned and another foreign owned um who are currently doing that but there is there is um scope for that um again you know we've mentioned over and over the best channels of communication and getting the best information as to the processes to follow for those because i'm sure it's also um one of those markets that you have to follow very stringent protocols to be able to um you know have a factory in the gambia um taipa and gcci would be the best people to advise for that but i believe there are some companies on the ground currently doing that again um, mr manga and mr mohan can can elaborate a little bit on that um if they may uh lpg i, I think the uh, market is a uh, quite uh, quite well serviced at the moment there it would be a unless a person comes in with some uh, revolutionary ideas uh it is a market that already has three players in the market two of them are importing the cylinders uh, one of them is uh well all of them are importing cylinders there's nobody manufacturing the cylinders here but they're all refilling they're all filling the cylinders and just have a distribution network uh there there is definitely scope for business but people must be uh, i think it'll have to be very competitive uh, it's a it'll be a competitive field keeping in view that the the market size is about 2 million people uh 2 million uh strong uh exporting across the borders will be a challenge in lpg because uh, again senegal would have its uh with its own uh, regulations simanga if i hi ala pato bola something ah mr manga would you like to say something If you should yourself with the matter. Mm -hmm. You're on mute. Yeah. Mm. I think so, so sorry we 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 were back over now again and and back again. Yeah. Uh, I don't know no, what no, I missed in the short period. I I I I was, I was Sorry? Yes. Mr. Mangal? Hello. I can hear you now. Yeah. So if you want to say something on that that note um uh, i'm so sorry because i missed a little gap i, I don't I, i'm not sure no no uh, we were, we're talking about lpg gas cylinder but mr mohan has already oh, absolutely answered. i mean i yeah. mean i mean um th there is a huge um, um uh, gap in the in, in in the market because everything obviously but uh, uh, what is the scope Most for uh, hospital furniture medical equipment and medical disposable in um, the gambia for that i think is a relatively small market but i would suggest use gambia as a hub for onward transmission to other countries um with regarding gas most of the major players today are the petroleum companies um who you know doing gas retail but we don't really have in the past we had two by gas and a few others that you know created subsidiaries from senegal but it would be great to have one specifically you know um uh, set up for this market and for onward transmission to other markets in the past we had restrictions because because senegal wanting to protect its market um where a lot of petrochemical um products would would have been very difficult to cross over to the borders but now it's it's okay because you have a lot of um uh, petrochemicals being sent to the malian market from the gambia so i think um uh, that that is also something to look at but i will also put this as my notes as one of the notes to to pinpoint which i will forward to her excellency for onward transmission to the group 
and excellency there was a company who was asking what is the potential for food waste to be converted into biogas because they are into putting out of those kind of a plant so they said fish waste if you have or food waste we can have so that can be converted into biogas biogas uh, compositing plant they are manufacturer and they are ready to come to gambia and install that uh, how one has to go about it if you can kindly give us the there is a market i, I think it's a, i i think is is actually a very timely business today and the reason being um we have a lot of waste that is not collected mm-hmm. um it was interesting that his excellency in his address talked about having met um uh, the KMC mayor Ben Suda uh, which has a lot of waste you know all over the gambia has a lot of waste so if we can have uh, one way of setting up a business one to collect and to turn it into reliable energy i think it's much needed we we have a dumping site or dumping site that are menace to the country so turning it into a business for that purpose i think it will be a, a welcome idea by government or any of the municipalities and just to um add on that before there was um some companies wanted to do it on a larger scale and requested that you know they import some of the waste um from different countries around the world to process that and there was a slight previous government i believe there was a, a blockade on that however um this new government i'm sure is something that might they might put into consideration um given the scale the people want to um do that project on uh if i may if, sorry if i may add here the uh, uh, there is a, a difference in what uh, uh i think what she was asking was about food waste and locally being converted small scale if it is yes i do believe that the current government as well has a uh, has a little worry uh on uh, on people importing waste uh, i did bring this up with uh, mayor ben suda myself as well because there was a company interested and he did say that one major concern was companies uh hiding uh, nuclear waste and bringing it so the the Uh, there would be ch- a challenge in getting a clearance a blanket clearance to import waste it will have to be a very specific uh, import but if a company is willing to come in and set up conversion of uh, food waste naturally generated food waste into uh, into compost mm-hmm. i think there's a amazing scope for that here uh, there is a definitely scope uh, for uh, setting up uh, waste uh, to energy provided the waste is not imported mm-hmm. no that is only for the waste which is uh, lying in gambia to convert it into compost so does he need a jv partner or he can come independent or he has to do work with the government what it is i do believe that they will have to uh, uh, they will have to get uh, consent from the uh, national environment agency uh, on on the type of plant they're setting up but once they have the clearance i think gambia is pretty uh, you don't have to have you don't have to have a jv you can come and entirely set up your own plant here they will welcome that uh, here gaipa gcci are uh, the brilliant agencies to go through uh, obviously starting with uh, her excellency in delhi she she's the driving force uh, and she's able to Because, open many um, doors i must say this here she's able to open many more doors than she can sitting in delhi than we can do from here <laughs> so um... that was uh, one thing because what i was uh, requesting your excellency the data for gambia is not available as much as we wanted like maybe the chamber of commerce or some data as of key people in pharmaceutical and all those if those data is provided of course you gave yesterday those addresses in the supplement which is there but apart from that we are talking about catering to msme sector where people to people connect can be done so what we propose excellency that in month of september we are planning to host b to b virtual meeting with our selected members sector wise like on agriculture on pharmaceutical our uh, solar and on it and so on so the first event we are doing exclusive partner country namibia jointly in association with our indian high commissioner and we propose to do it with gambia as well by end of september i'm sending you tomorrow an official note to that so if you can kindly uh, allow us at least one or two days exclusively on gambia where the members of gcci and the member of iacci can meet interact in the presence of all our high commissioner yourself and our council and with the chamber official and we can have about 60 to 80 meetings a day each meeting lasts for 45 minutes so that people introduce themselves exchange their card and then they take away 
from there to start over so there will be some people who are msme who wanted to put up uh, put up in gambia and explore the neighboring country like there were people were asking for warehousing concept they are commodity traders so they want to bring their rice they want to bring everything and they wanted to have a warehousing concept where from there they can send it to the neighboring frank open country because gambia is the only in between english speaking country so they are comfortable so there we wanted to give them some leverages some introduction of some importers or their partners etc so there i think your office can play an important role and i'll be sending that uh, letters uh, to you very soon and uh, we'll be using uh, your good office to conclude those b to b in a proper positive note so with this word i would like to uh, thank you all and request sumit sharma my colleague to propose a word of thanks sumit over to you thank you ma'am wishing everyone a very happy janmashtami janmashtami celebrates the birth anniversary of lord krishna the eight avatar of lord vishnu three important teachings of lord krishna be ready for the change act with conviction and set high standards the indo african chamber of commerce and industry strongly believes and follows the above teachings good evening madams good evening sirs good evening everyone i am sumit govind sharma a proud committee member of the chamber and the ceo of group mrp india private limited i on behalf of the chamber would like to extend our sincere gratitude and thanks to her highness madam jainabi jagne and her excellent team his highness sir lamin manga his highness sir ram mohan His Highness Sir G V Srinivas, we are very grateful for the excellent presentations. It provides us with huge learnings of the Gambia. We are confident that your expertise and experience will help all of us. Last, last but not the least, Madam Sunandar Rajendra, the Secretary General, for her sincere and dedicated efforts as always. We are looking forward to seeing you for our next webinar, which is on the twenty sixth of August, twenty twenty, at three pm. on this auspicious day we would like to make an announcement from september onwards we would be starting our b2b meetings which would be a gateway to various african nations it's a great initiative from the chamber to connect business houses from india with business houses from africa complete details of the b2b meetings will be shared shortly by our team once again we are thankful and grateful for all the support thanking you signing off sumit govind sharma